Timothy Good has researched the UFO subject for over 40 years. His first book, Above Top Secret, the worldwide UFO cover-up, published in 1987, is regarded as the definitive work on this subject. Having read his latest book, Need to Know, UFOs, the Military and Intelligence, I asked Timothy for an interview to discuss this very real subject. I started by asking, how did an interest in aircraft turn into an interest in UFOs? That's a good question, Richard. I've always been fascinated, for as long as I can remember, by aircraft and space travel. So when in 1955 I was given a book on the subject of UFOs, I was immediately hooked because this book by Major Donald Kehoe described reports by airline pilots, air traffic controllers, frequently confirmed by radar, of course, and military pilots. And these reports obviously were taken seriously by the military and intelligence agencies from the outset. So I, I got hooked because of that. And so what was the reason why you actually chose that particular book? Because it obviously wasn't about aircraft, it was about... Yeah, well, th this cousin uh, came over from the States once, uh, who's related on my mother's side, and uh, he knew of my interest in aircraft. So he said, Timothy, you like planes? Do you know about flying saucers? And I said, no. And so he gave me this book written by Major Donald Kehoe, which, uh, and I haven't looked back since that time, quite honestly, and I started doing my own research serious research in about 1961. Okay. And um, most ufologists are hell-bent on full disclosure and that really is their holy grail. I saw you interviewed a little while ago on TV and I thought this man isn't really hell-bent on disclosure. Um, that's not your agenda. I, I felt that... that um, what are your feelings about disclosure? W do you, would you welcome a full disclosure and could you just briefly explain to me, what, what, because your books are exposing the cover-up, so w what's motivating you to get that information out? Based on what I've learnt, full disclosure would be disastrous on, on several fronts, and I have been convinced, certainly for the last seven years, that gradual disclosure which I believe is the official agenda, if you can call it that, because relatively few people in governments have the faintest idea what's, what's happening, as you know. Um, really, it, it's got to be gradual. That is what I have been led to believe. And, and I, f based on what, what I know, I don't know everything, I think that is the wisest uh, way forward. Okay. And do you think that the releasing of the MOD files in, in March 2008 and... October 2000, do you think that's the start of that type of process, or is that just a coincidence? I think in a way it could be. Mm -hmm. I really do feel, um, because at the very least it's generating a tremendous amount of uh, media interest mm -hmm. each time these uh, documents are released by the batch. As you know, since the Freedom of Information Act in 2004, the MOD has been accelerating uh, the normal process, which used to be every 30 years, every 50 years, 75 years, 100 years, never, whatever, um, of officially releasing files. But they've been accelerating the process. I, I find it extraordinary that in the media, all these sort of headlines, top secret files finally revealed. Well, in the last few years, no top secret files have been released, and, I d and make very, very few secret files, certainly... Uh, Project Condine was an example about uh, four years ago um, of a UK eyes only secret document classified uh, like that mostly 465 p odd pages but generally I would say 95 percent are, are just confidential that is the classification which is very lowly yeah. and I was amused to see in the papers my own reports sent to the Ministry of Defence, like the famous case of Alfred Bertou, the, the fisherman who encountered a landed UFO in Aldershot, which a case I investigated thoroughly, and I first published it in Above Top Secret. Right. Prior to that, I sent the report 
to the full, my full investigation to the Ministry of Defence. And of course, this is trumpeted by the media's top secret files from the Ministry of Defence. Here's their report on the Alfred Burr 2 case. I mean... And it's been in your book, <laughs> book for years and years. Yes. <laughs> and just to go back, just to, just to press you on one point that you said, you said that you, that you didn't think full disclosure would be wise because it would, no. be, it, would, it, would, it would be problematic. But can you elaborate on that? I mean, what, what, is it, what secrets are they holding that, that the masses would not be able to cope with? Or, 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 yeah. Well, I'll give you a few examples. Okay. First of all, we're not just, when you talk about aliens coming here, we're not talking about one group. I know from my own connections that it's accepted by some governments that up to 50 or more species have been coming here over the years, and that's not so outrageous. Essentially, they're all humanoid, but there are variations. Let's just take a look at the abduction phenomenon. For starters, what is the true purpose of the abduction scenario? The aliens who are, and there are several types of aliens involved in abductions, not just the little greys as, as, as they're referred to as. There are other types, more human types have been involved in abducting. The famous Herbert Shermer case, for example, in Nebraska, a very human type uh, beings, very similar to, to Homo sapiens, certain differences, but then there are racial differences here, were involved. And I think, what, from what I've been told, certainly the so-called grey types, the ones with the sort of almond-shaped eyes and everything, they, uh, their motives are not what they indicate and what they tell people. Okay. There is a hybridization program. Hybridization is the name of the, the game. They've okay. been doing that since the 1950s as far as uh, it seems. And I think it's diminished to an extent nowadays. That's the reports I get from around the world. But I think probably a conservative estimate would, would be that hundreds of thousands of people have actually been abducted. That's my opinion. Now the question is why? Well, what I have learnt regarding that scenario it is that the purpose is indeed for hybridization but it's not for our benefit yeah. it can be argued that it's for our benefit but what I'm told is that it's for their own agenda which is takeover of this planet now that's kind of disturbing mm -hmm. if it's true I don't know it's true I'm just saying what I have learnt and this is obviously very very disturbing and apparently the hybridization program half alien, half human, whatever the proportions are, um, is to make us acquiescent, less violent. Mm -hmm. I, think yeah. <laughs> I can see very good reasons for that. But at the same time, is it going to make us more acquiescent to what they want to do, which is to take over this planet? They need this planet. I'm sure there are several spacefaring races who need this planet. Earth is unique. Astrophysicists are absolutely right about this. Earth is unique not obviously in the Milky Way, but for quite a ways around. And it, for, I think for donkey's years, it's, it's uh, a very attractive prospect to people looking for alternative planets to have bases on them or whatever. Um, some people would say that the, the decision to, to keep the this, this subject played, played down, covered up, is more to do with um, people maintaining their own power, people who are in positions of power, i.e. the oil cartels perhaps, sure. people who make um, armaments, that, you know, we wouldn't need that if, if, if we suddenly realized there was a threat which was massively more capable than our own. So some people would say that it's, that it's more selfish and greedy reasons why, you know, why it's covered up, rather than the, it's more, one, yes. the reason that you get Okay, it, it is certainly one of the principal reasons. There's no question about that. There, there are um, powerful